Hello, I'm Val Zavala. Welcome to Town Hall Los Angeles. Tonight we will speak with one of the architects of Los Angeles's artistic renaissance, Michael Govan. He is the man at the helm of the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, LACMA. Mr. Govan moved to Los Angeles a decade ago from New York with plans to turn LACMA into a world-class museum. Since then, LACMA has expanded its collections and exhibition space. The number of visitors has more than doubled, and LACMA has lifted Los Angeles into the Global League of Art Cities. But how is LACMA responding to LA's growing diversity? Is Los Angeles a good city for artists? What will LACMA look like after a dramatic renovation? These are just a few of the questions we'll be asking in this edition of Town Hall Los Angeles. I'm Val Zavala. Welcome to Town Hall Los Angeles. Michael Govan is the CEO and director of the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. Welcome. Thank you very much, Val. Michael, we're going to start with a little personal uh, background. Um, what first attracted you to art? Were there artists in your family, or did some particular event happen that drew you to art? <laughs> I just I used to draw as a kid all the time. I would just draw oh, and draw did. and draw, and so uh, you know, looking at art, looking for what other artists were doing, was just part of growing up. Did you ever think of becoming an artist yourself if you were drawing all that the time? That was the plan. I went to school to do that all the way through graduate school, actually. And then you get sidetracked when you want to be an artist. Sometimes you need a day job. <laughs> and I ended up screwing in light bulbs and museums and, and finding out that museums are very creative work, too. Do you mind my asking, if you, had ended, if you had continued on the artist track, what kind of art do you think you would be doing? Sculpture you know, one of the problems when you're an artist and then you see other artists who have done things already better than you think you can do them, maybe John Baldessari, then you think, well, maybe I should just work on showing his work instead of doing my own. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to let uh, everyone know that uh, growing up in North Virginia, you won a middle school contest for a charcoal <laughs> drawing, for a charcoal drawing of arm astronaut Neil Armstrong. <laughs> so. I guess that's true. <laughs> <laughs> So today, what are some of your fa personal favorite pieces of art? What art piece of art really move you? You know, I love all kinds of art. And one of the things I love about art is the diversity of creative production, whether it's a ceramic moon jar that's made in Korea in the 17th century or uh, something that's made in Los Angeles out of palm trees, like Robert Irwin's Garden in the Present. I think the, the, the great thing about art is that it is endless in terms of its descriptions of our humanity, our creativity, and so it's, it, it never gets old. <laughs> and it, well, what do you think of when you walk through, for example, Urban Light, one of the most popular uh, pieces of LACMA? How do you experience it? I think we're all very proud of that. When um, I moved to Los Angeles 10 years ago, Los Angeles was already on the map as an art city, especially because of artists. There are great art schools here. I knew artists in New York and other places in the world that were from Los Angeles, and so we would have that conversation. But the idea was Los Angeles, I think, often institutions are behind artists. They trail artists who are leading. And I think the idea was to make LACMA uh, as strong as the art community that was there. And Urban Light was one of those things that, you know, I got to Los Angeles and I talked about public sculpture. Mm -hmm. I thought that it's an indoor-outdoor city. We should have art outside. And there weren't enough images that you could grasp in public. And one of my curators, Stephanie Barron, said, well, you have to see what Chris Burden is doing because he's, he's uh, collecting street lamps and the city of Vienna wants them. So I scurried up the hill to uh, Topanga Canyon and to see Chris Burden. And sure enough, he had this amazing collection of 1920s and 30s street lamps. They were all about Los Angeles. As he said, each city made decisions about designing their own street lamp. They were public art before they were public art. And so long story short, we, we got to this place where we were able to commission him to expand and organize the piece as the entrance to LACMA. It's art, it's architecture, all night it's on, and I think uh, if you pass LACMA at two in the morning, you'll find somebody there looking at those street lamps. So it's become a central space, and I think that's the idea of, you know, of the town hall, of the town square for Los Angeles, those street lamps which represent all of Los Angeles coming together. As you know, it's been a huge success. I think somebody said to me at the time, uh, I was talking about our media age. Here we are in television, movies, the internet, so why are you spending all this time and money on uh, these street lamps and moving rocks? And I, I did say because, you know, you have to take your Facebook picture from somewhere. Like, you need a sense of identity that our sense of place 
and making a sense of place for Los Angeles is even more critical in a media age as we project ourselves uh, into this place and outward. What was LACMA like when you came? What did it look like? And how did you envision changing it? Because you definitely had a vision for it. Well, you know, LACMA is, is, we're the largest art museum in the Western United States. We're already a prominent institution, founded like KCET about 50 years ago by a group of families uh, who felt Los Angeles needed culture in the highest sense. And so that founding was a real landmark in Los Angeles. And families like the Amundsen's and the Carters put together their collections, were very generous, and built this building. But the buildings have aged. Los Angeles has grown hugely. And I think the point was for the institution to catch up with that growth of Los Angeles and begin to represent the Los Angeles of the present and future. So that meant expansion, diversification of the collections and programs, and for me, again, creating a sense of place. This is an amazing place. And so you'll see that, so the campus itself, the many buildings, the outdoor sculpture, um, is part of that sense of, of a gathering place. But that's going to change, right? We have kind of a strange amalgam right now of all these different buildings. So how do you envision transforming that? Um, so often museums accrue yeah. <laughs> wings or whatever. And, mm -hmm. and I think there was this sense, it was discussed in 2001, um, that you know, you, you, there's no reason why you couldn't kind of start from scratch. And that was aided by gifts from the Broad family, the Resnick family, to build the buildings uh, that I was able to open not mm -hmm. long ago, uh, new gardens public sculpture, the old May Company, as you probably know, is being turned into the Academy Museum yes. of Motion Pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, this subway will be across the street, mass transit, there are bike paths. So the thing that we have to fix is the old buildings are literally leaking. There are buckets everywhere oh, today really? after the rain. Oh um, and rather than put hundreds of millions of dollars into to res trying to restore those, because they were built for a different era, even a different way of visiting. We have more mm. kids and families visiting museums by far than we did in the 1960s. So the idea was a clean sheet of paper, an only in Los Angeles thing, where you, you design that in a utopian way to be a museum that's very experiential, very transparent transparent, very open. Um, and the great thing was we built our expansion first. The mm -hmm. Renzo Piano design buildings that exist will stay open during this period oh. of transformation. So LACMA never closes. We'll have 100,000 square feet. We'll be one of the largest uh, uh, art museums in the Western United States, even when we're undergoing this last phase of the transformation. Uh, when I got to LA 10 years ago, I think I, I spoke with the board about the fact that museums don't change quickly, that it would be mm -hmm. if a company thinks in quarters, we think in quarter centuries. It takes a quarter oh, century to sort of rebuild, rethink, um, and point to the future. So how much is it going to cost and when will it be done, the renovation? So the, reno the building itself is around $400 million. Of course, there's escalation and soft costs. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've, uh, we've talked about a campaign of about $650 million. Um, we would be open in 2023, timed for the opening of the subway stop across the street. Uh, will wow. be closed in half the campus for about five years, but will run a very diverse program in the meantime. 223. That will come fast, actually, if it all will. goes well. We're already planning exhibitions for I've forgotten about the subway coming in. That is going to transform the area. So. It is. I mean, and, and that idea, you have, you have the La Brea Tar Pits and the Natural mm -hmm. History Museum. You have the Academy Museum. You have the Peterson Automotive Museum. You have oh, the Craft no. and Folk Art Museum. This, center space with public transportation is really going to be that, with parks and gardens, uh, a center for LA. Mm -hmm. You had um, said, I think it was in a, an article I read, the largest potential audience for museums is people who have never been to museums. How many people in LA County have not been to LACMA? Do we know? Or I know, well, even you know, we love to tout our statistics of museums that mm -hmm. we have millions of people, which is true. We ended last year with over one point, almost one and a half million people. Wow. But remember, 10 million people live in LA County alone, and some of our visitors are repeat visitors. There are vast potential future audiences. Not everyone has even been to a museum. And so part of the responsibility in rethinking a museum is to make it accessible. Mm -hmm. I mean, part of the idea of even the entry, the urban light, which is open 24-7, that our entrance is open air, you can walk your dog through, that mm -hmm. you can be in the museum and the gardens and the public sculpture. Without buying a ticket and walking through a door. Yeah, before you even walk in the door. So you're already in the museum. So this idea of making museums just a matter of everyday life is the goal, oh, because they have that potential to enrich life on an everyday level. 
How is LACMA meeting the challenge of diversity, both in terms of ethnic diversity, economic diversity, and of course, you know, there's a big push now for more presence of women, women artists. Um, well, one of the great things about the LAC LACMA is that it is diverse from its beginning. So it was imagined as a museum of many cultures, and so the collections are full of art from many places and many times. So it, it starts with that. But I think we've learned that it's not just the collections you have, but your program and how you present it. And we are probably the largest trading partner with Mexico, for example, in programs right now. But it's not that every Latino wants to see uh, you know, Diego Rivera, yeah. they want to see Korean art and everything else. Exactly. The, the, the point is to make a place where people feel included and at home. That it's a place that represents many cultures and many identities like Los Angeles. And that um, it's a gathering place. So we've been doing that in our programs. We have very diverse programs. Right now you can see Chinese art, Mexico, Europe, anything you want. And, and Christopher Knight, a uh, Los Angeles Times art critic, noted a few years ago that a lot of museums have miserable track records when it comes to even just showing women artists, yes. and we can all agree, at least half yep. the population. Uh, and we worked on that long ago. It takes a long time to make exhibitions happening, but in the last three years, I think we've had eight solo shows of women artists, wow. far outstripping the number of male artists, not that <laughs> it won't be even, but I think LACMA is really at the forefront of thinking of that. In fact, we're even uh, leading a nationwide or coordinating for the Mellon Foundation, a uh, nationwide effort to increase the, the diversity in the ranks of curators who are the programmers and decision makers. It's an urgent need to create sustainability for our programs for the future, and, and, and that's a really exciting project. Yeah, I keep hearing, you know, it's going to be the year of the women, the year of the women. There's that famous uh, little quote about the Metropolitan Museum in New York that the modern wing showed 5% of the women in the modern wing were artists, but 85% of the nudes mm -hmm. were women. So do you have to be naked to get into yep. the Gorilla Met? Gorilla girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's, a, I love that. <laughs> it's a serious issue. But, you know, it's all over. The, it, things are changing. I mean, we're collecting a lot of art by young artists in the Middle East, for example, out of oh. in Iran and in other places. And I noted when we were looking at our young Iranian artists that most were women, just just most of the works that are being collected, wow. and they're not being collected for any that particular criteria. So I think things are changing mm -hmm. slowly. Good to hear. Let's talk a little bit more about Los Angeles now. Would you call Los Angeles a great city when it comes to supporting the arts? How would we, how would you rank it? Well, there's art being made in Los Angeles versus art being shown to the public. Los Angeles is an amazing place for artists to move to make art. Partly because it's all spread out, you can be anonymous, there are great schools, a lot of artists are working with video and media, and of course there are great tools in Los Angeles for that. The weather's good. <laughs> it's a wonderful place to be an artist, and it's attracting artists from all around the world. But as I said, artists often lead, and the institutions are young. So if we're 50 years old, the Metropolitan Museum is about to celebrate 100, 150 years. Yeah. So we're growing. And I think Los Angeles itself is such a young place. My friends in New York would often say, oh, you know, there just isn't the philanthropy. People just don't have that sense of generosity. And it's true. We underperform in those areas of cultural mm. philanthropy as a city. And I'm not saying about New York. We're talking about Houston and Chicago and really? um, others. Houston and Chicago are better than are us. Probably more significant in terms of their cultural philanthropy relative to their museums and their populations. However, that's just the nature of this big, diverse place. And I, I think there's something about why do you live in LA? Because there's a sense of freedom. You mm. can do anything. You can remake yourself. What does LA maybe not do so well um, as other cities is maybe we don't get together as well. We don't do mm. the together thing as well. It doesn't mean we won't. And I think the art museum, a place of many cultures, many identities, is a great place to get people together. And I don't just mean audiences and artists. I mean also philanthropists. And we've been trying to build a, a board of trustees and, and a support group that will uh, hopefully exceed expectations. Part of the big project, and the nice thing about having a big building project, is it gives people a chance to express that, that central interest in coming together to make something for others that will be lasting and exciting. It's true, LA is a good artist, a good place for artists for many reasons, but on the other hand, we're calling ourselves the creative capital of the world, and artists are, especially in the last few years, discovering it's very expensive to live here. They can't afford to live here. They're moving out, moving to less, ex less uh, expensive places. I'm talking especially the artists yeah. who can't sell a painting for $50,000, you know. So how do, we, how do we solve that problem, or do we live with it? And what happens if we do lose our younger up-and-coming artists? 
Well, it is true we are a creative capital. In fact, I think there are more artists, productive artists, working here today than in any city in any time in history. It's really a powerful thing. Um, real estate is essential to, to that in, in the sense that you both need real estate and institutions that are thriving for a creative community. But the expense of real estate, um, listen, Manhattan, there are hardly any artists in Manhattan yeah. anymore just because at one point you could get space for near free and now you can't. Yeah. And I, be honest, there are a lot of artists who think thinking about or are already moving to Detroit or cities that have a lot of inexpensive real estate. Mm -hmm. However, Los Angeles is a very spread out place. Um, you can find a garage. <laughs> there are still artists moving here and I think there's the balance of that creative community that makes it still attractive. But real estate prices, that's why even mass transit is so essential, not just for mm -hmm. the lifeblood of our economy but for, for creativity as well. When it comes to spending on art, you know, um, LACMA is a county department. It gets, I think, about $30 million a year. And, of course, the renovation is going to cost $400 million, maybe more. How do you make the case when we're looking at some serious social issues? Homelessness now has really become a major problem. Our schools need help. Our roads are in disrepair. How do you, how do you make the case for art when you're looking at all the more practical, in a sense, problems that we face? Well, they're all practical problems. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Los Angeles County is very enlightened and amazing in that it has the public involved in many institutions, not just LACMA, but the Music Center, the Natural History Museum. These are the jewels, educationally, artistically, mm -hmm. of the county, and they they create a centerpiece that's that's very powerful. And I think that the county of Los Angeles understands, unlike some places, understands that the arts are central to well-being. And I say that in many in many senses. We have to come together to solve homelessness. It's, it's in the way of us being a civilized society and a successful mm -hmm. metropolis. So we have to do that. But we need the arts and cultural education. We are educational institutions. We have one of the largest, if not the largest, in-school program of any museum in the nation in LA USD what does schools. That mean, in school? you mean, uh, We're in schools with teaching LACMA. artists. We are, LACMA is in schools with teaching artists, working with teachers, working with students in different districts. Now, the school system's vast, but it's millions of dollars we spend uh, in the school systems. And of course, we are by nature an educational institution. We teach about culture and life, so we are necessary as an educational institution. But I would say even more than that, that's maybe a, a pragmatic excuse, is that if you don't have culture and, and, and various examples of many different kinds of cultural identities, if you can't feel that and learn that and understand that, how will we all get along? Like if we can't indulge these questions of difference mm -hmm. and creativity and have art museums as one way we can do that, and also there's this sense of aspiration as a kid growing up, yeah, I, I was drawing in charcoal. There's a sense of aspiration I think the museum provides for all uh, to create. And so I think it's absolutely essential to civic life and to the well-being of communities uh, to have arts and culture. So you say art sort of gets us out of our little bubbles, would you absolutely. say? Absolutely. It gets us to think about others and other points of view. It inspires us with beauty, but also with questions. And this isn't just an art, the art museum, but if that's not fundamental to life, mm -hmm. what is? Um, let's talk about the future. What kind of experience will people have when they walk through LACMA 10 years from now? What, what do you want them to feel, not just see? So I think we want to design a slightly different take on what the art museum can be. And you're already seeing it with the public sculpture, the outdoor seating, the gardens, uh, the murals, this, uh, this idea of a integration into everyday life, the outdoors, and a casualness that makes everybody feel welcome. So that's number one. And 24 hours a day, hopefully, at Urban Light and, and maybe more. Um, and to have cinema and painting and sculpture. And I always remind people, we have forks and spoons in the museum. Like, we have all examples of material culture of every kind, high, low, whatever you want. So there's that sense. But I want to construct a museum that has that transparency and accessibility and is super experiential. And you can have the casualness on the outside, and then hopefully when you come inside, 
and the architect has designed something beautiful and light in space that you yourself can have an encounter with an object, a culture, a set of ideas that is deeply moving and deeply personal. So the best museum would be the one that isn't one way, but has this range of experience from the mm -hmm. casual, the jazz concerts outside, mm -hmm. to that very intimate experience wow. with maybe something another human being made in another time and place that can still speak to you. So a variety of scales. Yeah, the, from the intimate to the public. That's the trick of that design, is, is to create that. It's actually easy in Los Angeles because of this sort of sense of the outdoors and you don't have to start by opening uh, big bronze doors and climbing a staircase and going inside and you can have a lot of glass. So I think we can do this and that is, that is the plan to have a different a vibe in that sense. Can't avoid asking the question here with the new Trump administration. How do you think that administration will affect the arts? I was in Mexico City uh, a, a day ago with an international group of museum leaders from Asia, from Europe, from the Americas. Um, we were talking about the election, we were talking about Brexit, we were talking about what has just happened in Colombia, and everyone's trying to make sense of it. I think it's very clear, we don't know, <laughs> that the future is the future. Mm -hmm. It's one of the good things about the future <laughs> is that anything is possible. Mm. And I think we have a role every day to create open dialogue. I think we know the questions aren't simple questions and you need space and time for all of us to think. I think one of the principles of the museum though, of big art museums, is that there is a, an equality to many points of view, that we want many points of view, but we want many points of view that are certainly inclusive and respectful of others but there are many ideas in the world and many ways of seeing things. I think it's just important we do our work mm -hmm. toward this future that is still in our, always in our hands to make. But do you think, for example, funding for the arts will be under attack? You know, well, first of all, we're in Los Angeles County. <laughs> and we have a strong government who believes in the arts ah, and funds so us and cares. Mm -hmm. So we have a bright future for sure. We've been talking about Los Angeles and California being a strong economy and a good place to live. So I, I'm, I'm not sure that LACMA feel, is gonna feel anything but that support from Los Angeles. And I think we can offer that in turn to the public. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the future is the future. We mm -hmm. all have to work towards a future that we believe in. And then finally, say a decade from now, what kind of art city do you think Los Angeles will be? You talked about there's a little bit of disconnect, you know, that we don't talk to each other, don't connect enough. Do you think, say, does Pacific Standard Time help with that? Yeah. Or, or how do you think the, yeah, the, the larger art community will be? I actually think there is a coming together. I mean, mm -hmm. whether it's Pacific Standard Time that the Getty has, has led to bring institutions together around single topics, either the history of Los Angeles or coming up LA, LA, Los Angeles, Latin America, or mm -hmm. the reverse. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of coming together that I think is very, very, very exciting. We're collaborating with the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Mm -hmm. As I described, there are many institutions working together. Um, and if you think about our place, the world is shifting. Global politics economy to Asia and Latin America are rising in their importance. And think about it, along that Pacific, we're one of the biggest uh, places, metropolises, but we also are the most diverse. And so the idea that we would be a gateway or a place for discussion of the new world and a new world order of, of flattening and reimagining hierarchies of culture is a very, very exciting thing. I think we could find ourselves as it really in the center of, of discussion uh, in many ways. And LACMA actually is in a unique position because your mission is right. not any particular kind of art from such and such a year or decade or contemporary. Or your, Every, what is it, encyclopedic? Is yeah, that, and, and I, I will, people used to say encyclopedic like the encyclopedia, but yeah. of course we're always changing the definition of what's included <laughs> right. to make it broader. I want to say that almost anything goes. It's a, it's a really diverse place. That's a and more I, fun phrase, anything goes instead anything of Anything goes, and also we're very uh, <laughs> conscious of our relationships with other institutions. And, and I think working with smaller institutions, working in different neighborhoods, next spring we will open a small branch of LACMA at Charles White Elementary School. We've been okay. programming in the school with the kids, with artists and with our collections, uh, but there was no way to get there, get into the gallery from the public. So physically Los to get in? Physically. So Los Angeles County gave us a grant and now will be next year open on MacArthur Park uh, as a little branch of LACMA. And it's a really exciting thing, especially given Charles White's great legacy yes. as an artist working in Los Angeles. So there's, there's a lot to do in the future. Wonderful. And now we have a few questions from our audience. 
How do you feel about street art and the role in its commentary on social issues as well as the integration into traditional or more accepted art? Like Shepherd Ferry and Retina, uh -huh. you see they have these huge outdoor exhibits. Yep. Do you see them segueing into the LACMA halls? What do you think the process for that is? So uh, thinking about street art, one is that our urban light made of street lamps, I hope, is a little bit of street art <laughs> in that sense, and that it's open 24-7, and that it, there's, there's a sense of that engagement with, uh, with the street. But as you know, major artists uh, work in the medium of the public and outside the museum. So there are a few things to say about that. One is, not all art is in museums, and let's not get museums confused with art. <laughs> Art's a broad category of things that happen. Museums are, are places where we assemble that. And a lot of those artists you would call street artists, uh, they come to the museum to take some notes from Picasso, too. <laughs> so I see a wonderful back and forth. We have works in the collection that are by street artists. But I don't want to ever say that the art museum is sufficient to describe the frame for all art. Art exists mm. out as well as inside the museum. So art is something much broader, and we're excited to be engaged. MoCA did a street art exhibition, as you know. Um, from Facebook. Sebastian Ridley asks, what is the millennial engagement strategy at LACMA, and what demographics are lagging in attendance? Oh, that's interesting. So, uh, so yeah, it's interesting. Uh, millennials are, are, are helping to promote LACMA. <laughs> Ten years ago, we reduced our advertising budget, <laughs> and our Sorry. attendance has doubled. How did that Seriously? happen? And that's a lot of people marketing through social media. And it means a lot more when somebody says, wow, I had a cool time with my friends at LACMA, you should go too, than if I put up a big ad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so right. the word of mouth in this era, and millennials have been pushing us along, our, our demographic keeps dropping in terms of age and broadening in terms of the diversity of our audiences. I would like LACMA to look like Los Angeles. In, a, in our audience, in our programs, we still have a ways to go. The, the, the geography is a challenge, too. To, that's why we're talking about being in other places as well. Um, I mean, obviously, our, our, our uh, Latino Hispanic audience is growing fast. Uh, we do a lot of programming, actually, with Korean art, because we live near Koreatown, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I see as many signs going to work as in uh, Hangul and Korean as in English. So that programming helps bring people to LACMA, make them feel comfortable. But, you know, we are rapidly diversifying. But I, I hope the future is that we really do look like Los Angeles in every way, and I read those census statistics carefully with that in mind to direct us to that. Wonderful. Another question from a young man. Okay. so. You said something about that you could get artists to come to schools uh -huh. from LACMA. So I was wondering if there was a way I could uh, participate in getting an artist to come to my school. Uh, <laughs> yes, of course. You're on the spot. By the way, so LACMA uh, has many artists in, in Los Angeles public schools, uh, teaching artists that work with students. I've, I've been there. It's, a, it's amazing to see them work. Uh, and, of course, you can come talk to us about that. But also, we have a lot of programs on campus. We have an art camp in the summer, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. And every Sunday, we have the, the Family Sundays, Andale Family Sundays. And you can come and make art right on campus, outside, with teaching artists every week. So you don't even have to wait till one comes to your school if you want to come to LACMA. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Michael Govan, thank you so much for joining us and giving us your information and insights into art and Los Angeles. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Val. Thanks. And for more information on today's episode and the series, go online to kcet.org slash townhall. I'm Val Zavala. Thanks for watching. Funding of this presentation is made possible by Trader Joe's, Dickerson Employee Benefits, Kennedy Wilson, Peyton and Regal, Chevron, and AEG.